let's welcome to the stage this amazing crew, Elia Shockett, John Reynolds, Meredith Hagner, John Early, Charles Rogers, Sarah Violet Bliss. Hi. Hello. <laughs> So this was your first time seeing the episode. How did it feel? Let's just start right here. Well, I had seen it before. Oh. Whereas but we had not. <laughs> for post reasons. Wow. <laughs> um, it's great seeing it with an audience. You want to see more, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, it really leaves you on the edge of your seat. There's nine more. <laughs> um, no, it felt great. It's funny. You guys are so funny. It's so good. It's I love so this show. Funny. Yeah. How does it feel? This is the final season. After five seasons, you've had a year between some seasons. You've had network changes. What does it feel like to say goodbye to the show? I Do kept saying it, it cuz we knew it was the last season, but we couldn't tell the world that. But I kept saying like to everybody, I was like, I I grew up with you. Like that's what it feels like. It feels like we all grew up together. It's like a huge life chapter ending. Yeah. The last day of shooting was extremely emotional. Like, I don't think any of us expected it to be that emotional. We were, like, on and off yeah, we were We were, like, the, like, as soon as we all came together, it was, like, <laughs> it was, like, the, be the day before, we were, like, whatever. It's, I'm so tired. I'm ready to get out of here. And then we're just, like, no. I know. We were all crying, and then it was, like, somebody was, like, there's a hurricane coming, so we have to hurry the <laughs> fuck up. And it was, like, oh, okay. And the crew was just, like, why are you all crying? <laughs> they gave me wellies. I had to put them on and get all my shit out of my trailer. And it was, like, in standing water. I was, like, this seems like a fitting end. Yeah. I remember in the beginning of the season watching the Friends reunion on HBO Max and seeing them all cry during the finale and being like, oh, we won't have that. But that's like, you know. So which one are we? I was jealous of that, you know. And then, and then we were all sobbing. Yeah. It was sweet. And we're su it's such a, despite how gorgeous it looks, it's such a cheap show. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, they move so fast. So it was like bizarre. We, I feel like we were all, like the six of us were having a very emotional, like unexpected emotional experience. And they were like, we got to go. <laughs> Get over with. Yeah. Meredith, did you? I mean, it, yeah, I don't know. It just it was so emotional. And then, but I think also because we didn't do any press or we haven't been around people. I mean, we've yeah. been around people, but we haven't done anything to celebrate the show for since season two. So this is really actually so fun for us to get to watch it with you guys and like watch our my friends just do such a fucking great job. Like th this kind of stuff is really fun and special. And so I don't take it for granted. Yes. So obviously the show touches on millennial culture. Each season has kind of changed topics. We had the third season that was a kind of a Dory as Trump. Her truth was the truth. Uh, and then the fourth season, it was oddly kind of COVID perfect. It felt so just claustrophobic with, uh, with Dory being kidnapped and everything. Uh, and then this season, obviously we're getting a little bit of a hint uh, with some sort of, I, I get a cult energy from Dory uh, with what we've seen. She even manages to like get her therapist on board. Uh, what was Just it? What, <laughs> yeah. What were you wanting to address with this season? Well, yeah, cult is a huge part of the season, but this season is really hard to talk about because there are so many spoilers <laughs> in a way that we, there are twists and turns this season in a way that we can't even put into the marketing. So it's really hard to talk about, but <laughs> It gets really big and really crazy and really scary. Um, but, you know, I, I don't remember what I was going to finish my <laughs> sentence with, actually. What is this season about? Yeah, what is, yeah. It's big. It's crazy. <laughs> it's good it, for the world. I remember, I remember, it is some fun in there. there. I remember what I was going to say. I was going to say that it. I think we were channeling how it's been feeling like the end of the world for a while now. So I think that this season is really about how it feels like it's the end of the world. And yeah. we're going on like year three of it. <laughs> yeah, and obviously that terrifying scene with Dory and all the blood. Yeah. Feels that. Feel that. Feel that. Uh, bringing these characters to kind of their conclusion, what was that like? Uh, do you still like these characters, or do you feel that they are so beyond evil now? Yeah, I've always liked Dory. <laughs> she's messed up, but she's cool. Um, you know, it's such a fun job because, I mean, it doesn't really feel like a job. It does. No, it does feel like a job sometimes. Um, but just in the sense that, like, 
every season, um, my character has like changed so much. So it's so fun because it's not like I'm like, all right, like the serial kind of like lost girl. It's like every season, um, Charles and SV and the writers just like really push it so much where I'm like trying to find my footing. I'm like, okay, how does this make sense? And then it always does. It's just like, um, it's just they're so arced and creative and large worlds and um, and very omniscient. I really feel yeah. like I mean this season again. There's lots of spoilers, but it's it's commenting on so much that's been happening right now that you're just like right. Like they they just really have a sense. Um, but I've always had fun. You know, I feel very appreciative to play someone that has gotten to change so much. And it's like I have to wrap my head around where she's at every year, yeah. and nothing about it feels old hat or um, done before. You know. Yeah, I'm constantly surprised by how you get me on Dory's side, no matter what she does. <laughs> Gotta be likable, that's what they say. <laughs> and Drew, I mean, you kind of took an evil so turn you here. Yeah. Your character, John. Me, right. This is, yeah. Yeah. John Reynolds. <laughs> Good to see everyone. <laughs> so, I mean, in this episode, we see you kind of take this evil turn uh, towards tech evilness. What, what is it like finding the evil in Drew? Because I, I want to believe he's, like, the one good person. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, even his evil is sort of like a facade. Like, he's not, like, really that into siege. But he's trying to uh, escape in a new way. And it was fun to sort of play Drew in this one where he's like, oh, I'm going to just be selfish and leave yeah. morals aside. Because in previous seasons, he has been the one person who's like, maybe it's a bad idea. <laughs> And then, yeah, so yeah. to be a little bad boy for a brief moment. Yeah, I mean, that, I feel like that was the first time we really see you with confidence. You're, like, in that boardroom, and you're just like, oh, let's good. screw some people over. <laughs> yeah, it was funny watching. I was like... <laughs> that was a lot That's to memorize. That's what I did. Yeah, I, it truly was, like, blah, 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 like a lot of uh, buzzwords that <laughs> are so hard for me to try and memorize. Like, I think one time I auditioned for the Divergent series, and I was like, what are all these words? <laughs> and I got in the audition, and I was like, there was one word that was made up. And I was like, I, what is it, what is it, what is it? And then I got to that point and said the word. And it was like, in my head, I was like, I did it. And then I forgot the rest of the words. And I was like, oh, I'm so sorry, I forgot the words. And they're like, that's OK, have a good day. And I walked out, and uh, I'm Whoa. not in the Divergent series. I don't know what it is. <laughs> Um, so it was a lot of memorization. Yeah, you hated saying the words proximity-based grid interface. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Those are the words. You were just Imminent repeating that domain. in the hallway. Nailed it. <laughs> proximity-based grid interface. Um, yeah. So, um, Drew. Drew. Yeah. <laughs> and Meredith. Hi. Yeah. I, I obviously, Portia has a big turn in this episode, stepping away from acting. I know, it's so life. funny. She's like... 30 or what, 32? Yeah. She's like, She's I, you might as well just take me out back and shoot me. Um, which is a metaphor for uh, the life of an actress. No, um, I'm just kidding. Um, what's the question? <laughs> How has it felt bringing this character to this end, this final conclusion uh, of their well, story? Well, I'm the one on set that's a constant, I'm still holding on. I'm like, season six? I will, for it'll be like, 20 years from now and I'm like I think we should all do another season so I never really feel like it's the end um, but no I think with her evolution as a person or de-evolution um, it's sort of fun playing with her version of, or just the circumstances really hitting rock bottom and how that manifests for her and she's so susceptible and such this vulnerable person that's just looking for guidance and I think in this first episode it's the first time she's truly like given up and that was really fun to play of like what her version of like she's kind of alcoholy and you know just she's at she's like I just should I'm just gonna drink my sorrows away and then playing throughout the season of like how she as I think like an innate optimist still grabs on and finds um she like has to find her light in some way. So it was fun actually this episode playing like what Portia at bottom is. Yeah. And I actually had a really good time with it. Didn't they do like Britney oil hair? <laughs> I went really big with like trying to like, I, then I was watching and I was like, I really wanted to look like Grey Gardens or something in that scene. <laughs> You, you mean look great. With, I think, yeah. it, I it's, think it's, it's a really good look. I yeah. went really, I was like, I think, no, like crazy. Okay. I was like, oh God, I could have put a little, anyway, that's all I have to say. <laughs> and obviously John on Elliot, Hello. 
Elliot clearly takes a big step in this this episode, starting a family. Yeah. How, how did how does he get there? Well, I don't think it's that big of a leap for like rich gay people, you know. Um, I don't know. There, yeah. <laughs> I just like the even him going back to his partner. I when the door opens, I was just like, of course. Yeah. Like you were, what? You, you were surprised. Or, you, no, you weren't. I wasn't said, really, but the, just, like, the whole conversation is so realistic. Like, yes, that's why we're soulmates on the shadow yeah, side. Like, yeah. yes, like, you get it. Yeah, I mean, he does make a big plea in the finale of season four for people to kind of embrace their shadow sides. So, yeah, it makes sense that he, <laughs> he just fully dives back in. But, yeah, I think, I don't know, I just want to say a little tidbit that the graphic design that everyone laughed at of the babies in, in kiddos, in the kiddos' office with John Waters. Um, Charles did the graphic design. It's so brilliant. Literally did the photoshopping Genius of behind making the their eyes bigger. Yeah. I already had them ready to go. I, that's literally. He, he does it to us in between takes. Do. I'm like, I don't you have shit to do? Shit like that all day long. Crazy <laughs> looking baby. I'm burying so much trauma. Uh, so you mentioned John Waters amazing appearance in the episode. Uh, there are some other guests this season, which I won't spoil or mention, but obviously there have been amazing guests in, in the Search Party universe. Who is your favorite guest star, Ben? What are your favorite guest star stories? <laughs> been so lucky. We've had such great uh -huh. actors. Rosie Perez was a real, oh. really fun and like super professional and like shared all the stories at lunch. You know, she was yeah. like, yeah, that's when I met Spike Lee. <laughs> like I was dancing, it was crazy. <laughs> like she would just like go for it, just like nothing shy. Um, Christine Taylor, I just oh, love yeah. so yeah. much. She's a dream. A and she's so fun. And she has such a fun energy on set. Like she's yeah. such a goofball. I love Christine. I mean, I love every, oh, we have uh, such great guest stars. It's really hard to pick one, but um, Louis Anderson is just like the biggest sweetie in the world. <laughs> he sent us like texts of uh, like a, a Christmas song of his on Christmas and with no, uh, with no like explanation of it. It was just him singing a carol. And we're like, I was like, that's so beautiful. Thank you, Louis. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, I think John Waters is the end all be all, but I just, was my worst self around. I just couldn't do it. It was just too, it meant too much to me. Yeah, I just could I, I, and then uh, like, he's really good friends with um, Leslie Van Houten, the Manson girl that's been like, won't be released from prison and he like advocates for it. And I was like, we have a Leslie Van Houten storyline in Search Party. And he was like, well, that's no good. And I was like, you're right. <laughs> just like, no, he was extremely nice, but I just felt like I kept, I kept turning to John and just being like, I'm, I'm fucking up again, I'm fucking up. <laughs> it was so hard. You were so graceful, it was totally, that was a really good impression of him too. Thank you. Yeah, that was, that was really, Shocking. I kept his business card in my wallet for <laughs> seven years. I met him at this film festival and I've emailed him like four times being like, would you like to ha watch something of mine? <laughs> like, <laughs> and then this, I was like, it's the last season of the show. Please, please consider it. Um, I was like, last season saw Cola Scola in drag as Susan Sarandon. I was like, that might make sense to you. Um, <laughs> And I and finally he said yes. Yeah, so we've, we've been trying to get him on for like the last five seasons, and then finally we got him. Oh, that's amazing! It's all about his um, schedule going to P town. <laughs> his P town schedule. <laughs> <laughs> any others? Any other big guest stars? I think Judy Gold. Yeah, yeah. Is, yeah. she's in the pilot, and she's so good. And be, because she's so early in the show, I feel like she gets forgotten as like a guest appearance. But she's yeah. so yeah. funny. She's the interview of leading women to lead. In the, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she helps. I feel like set the like, guest stars. I, I, I a good get someone that like really contributes to the tone, especially in the pilot. It helps set the foundation for the rest of the series. I really think. And someone that can like seamlessly, like we kind of create this weird, whatever this tone is just by, for years. And it's very hard to come in and find your groove within that. Yeah. And I think the people that are, I mean, all these grades obviously can, but I think it's still tricky and it, it adds all these nuanced colors to the show that are, anyway. <laughs> Parker Posey too. I still, yeah, I cannot still, I'm like, ah, no, that was a dream. That was believe. a dream. 
And then um, Chilita Grant, of course. Like yes. you have to shout out Chilita. Yeah. I have to say with Parker Posey, I smoked. I don't smoke cigarettes, but I was. I mean, you know, occasionally. <laughs> but um, but she was like, "Do you want to smoke?" I was like, "Yeah." <laughs> and I took like seven cigarette breaks with her, like a seasoned smoker, just to like talk to her. Yeah, but that's like the coolest cigarette you could ever smoke. Like that's when it's okay. I think about her set style, like because usually you just go to set. It's like 4 a.m. and like I don't know, whatever. And she would come in with like clogs, like do you remember like worn clogs, a slouchy onesie, her dog, and these huge sunglasses. And I was like, I have, and I, I think about it all the time, <laughs> and how I aspire. Anyway. Well, I think we should we should say though because it's it's already been released that Jeff Goldblum is a huge part of the season, yes. and so is Kathy Griffin, and um, and then Dory gets a bunch of disciples that they all have to wrangle together in, in this cult, uh, which is Joe Castlebaker, Michelle Badillo, Grace Coolen Schmidt, Angela Trimber, uh, Larry Owens, and who's the last? Who's the last? Gr- Greta, Greta Title. Greta Title. Yeah. <laughs> My good friend. Yeah, your closest friend. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. I, I, you mentioned so many great and amazing up and coming young comics. Uh, what was it? Was it important to you to get those people on the show to highlight? We loved kind of it. We loved talent. having younger yeah. talent on the show. We loved it. <laughs> They're literally our age. <laughs> Just a young, dynamic, new, fresh voices. We what love that. Like? <laughs> John was not threatened by anyone. <laughs> but it is like you look at the guest stars you get, and it is very much like a who's who of like up and coming, the best comics, like the best people in, in New York right now. You know? I think it's because everybody knows each other. You know, like, and also with the internet, like, we're all following those people anyway. So it, but it's nice to, but I guess like, other shows don't cast like the people that we're all like no those are like the most famous people in the world <laughs> <laughs> like those are the most talented people in the world and then people are like you get really good actors and it's like yeah because those are the great actors yeah. of our time <laughs> but, but also, i'm happy to take credit for it but they're definitely just d- living their lives and the yeah. show happens to exist yeah. at the same time <laughs> and you just happen to be friends with them <laughs> yeah well you gotta be nice to people yeah. So I am really curious, uh, there was some time between, I believe, seasons three and four, there was like a year, uh, you moved from TBS to HBO Max. I'm really curious, (laughs) (laughs) Charles and Tara Violet, uh, knowing you were going to HBO Max, things could get a little, you know, get a little crazier, a little more X-rated. Did you kind of change how you were writing the story? Uh, do you kind of let the news, you know, change uh, what you're doing or, or the direction you want to go in? I mean, the, it, being on HBO in terms of the, like, uh, changing the tone thing, it, we didn't want to change the tone of the show so much. What did change is that we didn't have commercial breaks, so it just kind of, like, it's like, and it's now can be... 30 minutes or whatever. Um, so it got a little bit longer and not having commercial breaks. And also we had to like edit two different versions, one for TV and one for streaming. So editing it goes a lot more smoothly. Um, but yeah, wait, what was the other part of your question? The, the uh, And if anything that happened in the world while you were producing this oh, season right. changed your direction. It didn't, I, you know, subconsciously, but it wasn't like we were like, let's, take what that is and then like do our own spin on it um you know this season there's a little bit of a you know like charles was saying that the feeling that we've been living in that like it's all it's all gonna end (laughs) um that that kind of um you know presented itself in its own search party way (laughs) i think though like the way that we've written the show has just like because we've lived in the world of this show now for so many years like our handle on it's just sort of like loosely changed and evolved and like this season is I mean what is so cool about the season as the last season is that Dory is the exact opposite of how she started out the season is unrecognizable compared to the first season and we would never have imagined that that was the way it was going to go so just like living with the show how it's changed how it moved like how we kept coming back to it and how the world's just gotten crazier and crazier like it's our relationship with the show changed because of the sh- I, don't, I don't know sometimes it feels like this show, show changes on its own and we're just like oh is that what it is oh okay great and it's that thing of like a dialogue, I guess, between yeah. the thing that we're all making together and the way it just is. And yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, 
I, it'll take me decades to process, probably. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so one moment in the show that I, I still process every day, uh, last season, there was an iconic three-way kiss between you three. Uh, I love that they put you all right in the middle together. <laughs> that was our choice. Yeah. <laughs> We live uh, together in Meredith's house. <laughs> and you're all married, and it's, yeah, it's a yeah. beautiful relationship. Well, I don't even talk now. to them. <laughs> obviously, I, I want to know about this kiss. How did it happen? Please tell us every detail. And then, obviously, what was it like being on the outside of that? Like, d what was it like seeing that? Yeah. Like, Arch I would imagine you all feel like family at this point. Like, did that suck? <laughs> yeah, John. Well, Last season, I was so separated from everybody. And it was amazing because working with Cole Scola was, I mean, the genius that they are. But I missed everybody. And we also, for a moment, thought that might have been the last season. And we were just like, this can't be the last season. Like, the gang isn't back together that we always reference. That's us. <laughs> um, but, no, I remember that was, you know, not to spill the bag, but that was an improv that I remember when they shot that, Charles and SV were like, they sent it on our group text, and we're like, you have to see what we shot last night. I was dying. I watched it over and over again. I was laughing so hard. So have I. And I just, like, loved it. And I was watching it over and over again, and then I, like, got sadder. I was like, oh, well, fuck. I want to do that. I want to be a part of it. Um, but, no, that was just, like, a genius. They played drunk so well, and it was just a hilarious moment. I feel like we have different... Like, I like to take a little bit of credit for it because <laughs> I feel like I was being a little, like, schmoopy. What's a word I created? But, like, I feel like I was being a little, like, flirty. And then from how Seinfeld. did it... Your heads it were, your heads were kind of budding. Like, your lips were getting closer like, and the, closer. In the, in the frame, it was just like, they were like, oh, my God, are they going to fuck? And we were like, the, the, Charles was like, well, they should kiss. And I was like, they should kiss. <laughs> and, then, like, and then it was just like, it was like truly like, that's what collaboration is. Yeah, I feel <laughs> so like. And they, and they said, like, no. Like they said, we closer. will not kiss. And we you said, you will came kiss. Over, like, no. Really no, you guys. And you're like, I we have a question for you. You guys got all sheepish and shy. And you're like, no. You wanted to. Yeah. Yeah, they came over after a couple takes of that scene. They were like, will you three-way kiss? Yeah. And we were like, yeah. <laughs> we were like getting closer and closer, and it seemed like the next step. And I was like, yeah, I think we know what they're going to ask. <laughs> we let you all do what you really wanted to do. Yeah. Deep down. It was so hot. <laughs> And there's a that's a hint of what's to come in this season. Yeah, I mean that's what that was my next question. Uh, are we gonna get more of this trio? I mean, obviously from this episode, they pretty immediately were like, we gotta get rid of Dory. Sorry. <laughs> hey, uh, come back, trust me. <laughs> and then obviously for Drew, we have this little twist up of him now sleeping with Portia. So what was that dynamic like? Crafting that, switching up on that. Well. Uh, the first scene we shot of the season was Meredith and I kissing in front of uh, Elliot's house. And Meredith came to set with a sandwich that had Doritos on it. And she was like fully <laughs> That's my signature Sammy, y'all, on set. And Turkey it had like Doritos, Doritos all over her face. It was like, Johnny! <laughs> Are you so As you excited? can tell, we have riveting chemistry in real life, so it was really hard to try to, you know, I mean, I literally did. I, I mean, it is my signature sandwich. And I do feel like some people on set are a bit jealous. We have very, s yeah. Meredith and I have very similar snacking profiles, so we actually do it have was this, fine we have this, And I always say, look, we have the same taste buds. Um, so yeah, so our sexual chemistry was <laughs> off the charts. Yeah. So to create like a sort of a a bad chemistry. Yeah, because we're both just extremely sexual individuals. <laughs> so it was kind of wild on set. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was actually it was so fun though, wasn't it? Oh, it was really fun. Yeah, and I feel like Meredith and I just kept feeding off each other and getting like. Our performances were like bigger and bigger. Yeah, and bigger. they kept having to come and be like less. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, were <laughs> we were doing like vaudeville at one point. Because like, yeah, you know, my character doesn't <laughs> isn't that big of a character, but with Meredith, it's like she's just going so hard. It's like, wow, well, that's a. We're like, oh. <laughs> yeah, good times. Yeah, I mean so. that 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 kiss. It's electric. It is definitely something. Which one? Uh, the one outside of Elliot's house with the. Pecking. Oh yeah, yeah. Just the pecking is so. Yeah. Visceral. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -mm. yeah. Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> you were doing all these like little like bird sounds. Mm, that's good. 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. Just like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, Alia, this is sort of the first episode where we get to see you reconnect with the gang, as you said, in that sort of intro hospital scene uh, after you're saved from from all of the drama of last season. Uh, that scene, uh, there's so much energy in it. You really are just batshit crazy is the only way I can say it. Like, you know, like they say, I can't be friends with that. How did it kind of feel to take Dory there after everything? Um yeah, I mean, obviously, as the first episode, I kind of feel like I weirdly, as an actor, um, prepared for that scene more than the, I did the rest of the season. Um, but it was really fun. It was also the very first scene that we all had, obviously, together. And it was just a funny thing, because I'm like, I was wearing a bald cap, which was very well done. And it looked like I had a shaved head. Yeah, I, I thought I was hair. wondering. Yeah, they yeah, had a full bald cap. Unbelievable. It took hours. Yeah. It took longer to take off. It was a test. Um... But, you know, I'm, like, doing, even the first couple episodes, I'm, like, doing all my, like, solo stuff to really get back with them. And so when they see me, you know, John, John, and Mare, like, coming in, and, and then also I have this, like, whole monologue where I'm, like, kind of tripping. And um, it was just, like, a funny way to see each other again. You know, we're like, hey, first scene back. Okay, watch me. You know, it was a lot of, like, I'm going to go. You know, I have a lot to do here. Um, and I was in, like, a certain state. But it was kind of, like, um... I don't know if you've done psychedelics, but I was referencing some kind of place like when you you just saw like something, like you just did ayahuasca and you're like, I fucking figured it out. Um, and yeah, so I was kind of like tapping into that. It was a really fun scene to do. I really, you know, really, really loved it. But um, yeah, there's so, it's so crazy because like there's just so much more to go. <laughs> you have no idea. It just goes in so many crazy places. So uh, this feels big just watching the first episode, but I'm like, yeah, yeah, just wait. Though. Yeah. Like, because like, you're so pretty much, much more. immediately separated from them. <laughs> yeah, but we get back together soon enough. Yeah, yeah two or three. We're, we're all finally hanging out again somehow. Yeah. No yeah. spoilers. No spoilers. <laughs> Jeff Goldblum, that's it. Yeah, that's all. That's all you yeah. can know. That's all you can know. Jeff, Jeff's only in one scene, by the way. <laughs> yeah, he's actually so just in like himself. Like 10 it's seconds. not like Jeff's show. He, yeah. He's in the background. Yeah. We know he had his own panel yeah. on Vulture Fest, so. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, we're, we're almost uh, coming up at time. So I, I'm really curious what you, you know, the show is ending. It's the final season. Uh, what are you kind of hoping the legacy of the show is? How do you hope people remember it? I hope people remember it. Question. <laughs> <laughs> At all. I don't know. I mean, I I don't have a good gauge on like how many people watch it in the world, really. Like, other than that, sometimes people are like, you know, the UK loves it, and it's like, oh, okay, I didn't know. <laughs> so, and then other people are like, we don't get it in Spain, and it's like, oh. <laughs> Yeah, I hope that they get it in Spain. Like, I hope that anyone who wants to see it can see it whenever. But I hope, it, I don't know, I hope it stays. I mean, probably the cloud will crash and all these streaming platforms that have overdone everything in the world are just going to crash too in like two years. But I would really love if it like had a Twin Peaks kind of like foreverness to it. And I don't know, sometimes things grow, like the comeback or something like that, and then sometimes they don't. But I would really, it would be really nice if... Um, People remember it. <laughs> it's it's such a capsule. I I feel like of of this time in yeah. a very extreme, like very funny, but like you know, still like you know, smart and a very self aware. Um, more so than you know, really any other show, I think. And um, so so many amazing people that I've worked with or just met are such big fans of it. And, like really see it for what it is. And I have a weird track record of making good things that nobody hears about until years later. But the point is, it's like the show, like Charles and SV have just, no matter what, like stuck to what they feel is true and funny and smart. And they've never sacrificed even a little bit um, for whatever seems pop. They're just not swayed by it. They just have such a smart view. And it's just such an amazing show. And I'm so proud of it. And things that are this cool, they take a fucking second, you know? People catch on later. And um, so hopefully it's not too much later, and we get nominated for a fucking Emmy or some shit. Yeah, that's yeah, what that's what should happen. It's it's yeah. you know, it's so yeah. good. Yeah. That's the right answer. Yeah. That's the right answer. Yeah, yeah. As long as we get an Emmy, <laughs> then it'll all have been worth it. Jeff Jeff will win the Emmy. Yeah. <laughs> it'll be a guest starring Emmy. So sorry, <laughs> but I saw the first three episodes. You deserve an Emmy, actually. 
<laughs> I will say, SV and I had shared, SV wrote a, a, a card to me about how she's so proud of the show, and she thinks it's like one of the most Im important things ever. And I, I feel that way too. As Maybe that's annoying to say, but I really do feel so proud of it. And I feel like, I don't know how it came to be, and I don't know how it kept coming to be, but I just really... I'm so grateful for it. And I'm so grateful for you guys. You guys are yes. absolutely yeah, no. magical. It's truly crazy how incredible <laughs> these people are. Yeah. Like, truly, it's just like, wow, how did we manage to all come together and, um, like, create this thing that everyone gets? And then, like, yeah. that help. I think that helps when the guest starts. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> when the guest stars come on, because, like, you keep them safe and they understand what the tone is and everything. And, like, it just all, like... Yeah. It, it feels inevitable, you know? We collectively flirt with them. Yeah. <laughs> I, my, I have a friend who said <laughs> that Search Party is, like, the only show that acknowledges that we live in hell. <laughs> and I think that's, that's what its legacy will be. <laughs> yeah. It's, like, it's so not, it, it just really is going there. Like, everyone feels like shit all the time right now, you yeah. know? And, it, and Search Party really, like, has the teeth to, like, acknowledge that i don't know and uh one time i was in a small town in florida in the airport and an agent at tsa went you're in the show the search <laughs> and i said yeah <laughs> and then he said that's a great show me and my wife love that show oh. and i hope that'll be the legacy <laughs> he was talking about stranger things yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah which is on netflix <laughs> Pretty good show. Yeah. <laughs> Meredith. He's talking about four uh, weddings and a funeral. <laughs> I'm I, not in that. You are in that. John is in that. Um, I just got emotional looking at SV and all of these guys because the, the sh not to make it about me, but <laughs> the, show, the show has really changed my life in, like a, in, in such a major way. And I think the gravity of, of just... It's just, I, I, I think the legacy too will be hopefully looking back on all these guest actors, hopefully us, but like the just the, the, the tapestry of people that come through that have come through the show, hopefully that will obviously continue to do amazing things. And I think it'll be one of those sort of special things. And I liked what Alia said. I, I feel like it will be a time capsule piece. Um, I hope because it really does sum up. And it's, yeah, I'm going to stop talking, but I love everybody. Yeah, I love everybody. I'm going to start crying. <laughs> I was just going to say that it's been, like, the greatest honor of my life working with all of you. So, yeah. Same as Right back at Same as we. Oh, we're going to get drunk tonight. Yeah, we are. I'm already drunk. We're going to hold each other. Well, you're pregnant, so you can't get too drunk. But. Oh, my God. Well, well that is our time. And I'm, I'm glad I, we got to end on such a beautiful, sentimental note. You know, and it, it wasn't stupid. So. <laughs> Thank you so much for Thank joining you. us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Ashley.